What's going on, everybody? Welcome into Post Game Live. Wow, what a game as the Broncos lose to the Indianapolis Colts 12 to 9 in OT. Rachel V. Hill, DMAC here. DMAC, there's a lot to dive into here, and <laughs> I don't know if someone needs to get fired, but something needs to change for sure. Rachel, I moved here in 1999. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of Broncos games yeah. here. That might have been overall one of the worst Broncos games of all time. Now, they certainly have been beaten bad. And sometimes it's just not your day or things, you know, it's you're not as good or, or whatever. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen that. But this performance, based on who they are, where they were, the decision by Russell Wilson late in the game in terms of the interception, going from the gun twice instead of being under center with a yard to go. Mm -hmm. Rachel, I swear to God, I, I don't know if I've seen a worse Broncos game in 23 years. I mean, and first of all, it's just a terrible football game, period. But specifically for the Broncos over a team like that with the Colts, horrific. Last time, DMAC, you and I were in this spot, and we were really happy because the Broncos beat a solid 49ers team. Now we're here where they beat one of the worst teams in the NFL. And it wasn't pretty. This offense could never get going. But you have to talk about the main play of the game, which, in my opinion, is the touchdown that Russell Wilson threw that was an interception. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't I don't I, know what he was thinking or what he saw. Um, it was completely unnecessary. And I, 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 I sit here stunned. By the way, that chanting that you're hearing, talk about insults and injuries. That, those are Colts fans, Rachel. They're, they're are screaming, Colts I believe, fans. Russell sucks. Russell sucks. We've got um, right behind d Mac's shoulder the Thursday night football set. And there's a lot of Colts fans over there, and there's a lot of people yelling about Russell Wilson. Yeah, because, because Matt Ryan. Yeah. Matt Ryan, who is terrible, is on the set talking to those guys instead of Russell Wilson or perhaps Bradley Chubb. I mean, there were plenty of great defensive players for the Broncos. Yeah. Matt Ryan is up there. I cannot believe they lost this game. Rachel, almost any scenario on that last drive in the red zone by the Broncos, more or less, even if he misses the field goal, mm -hmm. you, you, you've got the Colts with like no timeouts having to go, I mean, at least a good chunk down the field to get a field goal. It was horrific. Here's a stat for you. The interception cost them 24% win probability. 24%. We know that fluctuates a lot. But in a game like this where the offenses were ugly, the Colts didn't even score a touchdown to be able to beat the Broncos. It was all field goals. And then it's and, all and, field goals. And, and landed on the defense to be able to stop the Colts from getting in field goal range. And they couldn't no. do it, even though they had played pretty great the entire game. No, this is of epic nature. Mm. And the whole drama with Melvin Gordon, I mean, he was fine. I mean, but that's, my, that's another thing. Why are you throwing the ball? and not giving it to Melvin Gordon, who has that fire in him because he wants Broncos country to be with him. And you choose to throw it instead of giving it to somebody who has such a high percentage of getting in the end zone. I, I don't know, Rachel, there's no explanation. And then, but who made the call? Who do you think made the call, DMAC? Well, you know, there were a couple of interesting ones. First of all, they converted on a fourth down to mm -hmm. keep that drive going. That one was risky. Frankly, if they just kicked the field goal there, they win the game. Yeah. They did convert it and then, you know, blew it later. So you win the game if you don't take a chance there. And then you had a really quirky decision. What do you do fourth and one? Do you kick a field goal and hope your defense can get you the ball back and just settle for a tie? Or do you go for the win? And you know what? I'd, I'd actually have to think about that one a little bit deeper. You don't have that luxury. Um, but they decide to go for it. I don't know, Rachel. It's a great question. There's a lot of questions. I also have to ask you, would you go for the win or do you go for the tie? That's a trick. That is a tricky question because you still had, I believe, a in couple this situation, of there is only one right answer, in my personal opinion. Okay. And you go for the tie because your offense hasn't been able to do jack bleep. You go for the tie. Well, but, but my, my hesitation there, it might not have to be a tie. For example, um, you could go, uh, you could tie the game and then kick off and stop them three and out theoretically and perhaps even get the ball back to go for another field goal before the game's over. So it's not it's not like there were like 10 seconds to go in the game. There were, there were actually a couple minutes to go. There, there was time if you could get a defensive stop. And, um, and you went for the win. They went for the win. And you know what? 
I, here's what's frustrating too. You you actually didn't have to get a touchdown there. You could have just got a yard. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of frustrations. We heard that there was throwing of helmets. I can't imagine what the locker room is like. Our very own James Merlat is here with us now as we'll bring him in. James, there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of scratching your head. What did we just watch? What did we hear from Nathaniel Hackett? Well, he was, he did tell us that he got the go-ahead to go for it on fourth down. I thought that was interesting. He got the go-ahead. He's the head freaking coach. And he got the go ahead. I, Did he say who gave him the go ahead? Was it Jerry Rosberg or was it well, Russell it was Wilson? Jerry Rosberg, unless they hired a thirty second and thirty third and thirty fourth coach, in, you know, in the last couple of days. But I, I, I couldn't believe when I heard it. Like we all knew it, right? We all knew Jerry Rosberg was up there giving him these decisions. But guys, not only that, but they called the 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 Colts called a timeout. The Broncos called a timeout. They had forever to think about that play. Come up with your best play, whatever you've been working on all week for two-point conversions, for a big fourth down, and that's what you got. You're going to throw it to Stephon, uh, at Stephon Gilmore on a crossing route in the back of the end zone? Like, it was fourth and one. You didn't need to throw the ball into the end zone. It was just brutal. But you know what? It's actually a fitting way for this game to end. The, the Broncos, if they were a good team, they win tonight 31-9. to nine. Like, you run the Colts out of the building – and the fact that they let him hang around and it was even a competitive game was ridiculous. This is the most poorly coached football team. And, and listen, I was anti-Fangio and I thought he was terrible. Guys, this is worse. This is the, the decision on with a 9-6 lead on third and three or whatever it was with two minutes to go and the Colts had no timeouts and you throw it into the end zone? It's it's unbelievable. But uh, according to Coach Hackett, it's uh, – Self-inflicted wounds. So that uh, continues to apparently be the problem. We've heard yeah, that well, no kidding. I one mean, million you, times. Coaching self-inflicted wounds, uh, players self-inflicted wounds. Um, I mean, just bizarrely unacceptable. Uh, crazy. And the decision that Russ made, is he okay? I mean, he was in the tent. He was being looked at for a I head didn't. issue. We did see Brett Ripon warm up quite a bit, by the way, James, on the sideline. I'm not sure how much they, they covered that on TV. I mean, how do we know Russ was even okay? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, they had six people standing around a monitor trying to see if he wobbled a little bit when he stood up, which – that interception was terrible, too. Like, I don't know. Oh, oh, abysmal. And that cost him points. And then instead of going and trying to tackle the guy who intercepted the pass, he, like, dives at a blocker and takes a huge shot to the head. And he did get up a little like, ooh, okay, that's not great. So, listen, I think if it wasn't, you know, a week after the Tua play, nobody's thinking anything of Russell Wilson coming back into the game. But, gosh, guys. Like, you would have to try really, really hard to lose that game tonight. Like, I don't know that the Broncos could have thrown the game and managed to lose it as bad as the Colts were, and they still managed to lose. That's how unbelievably inept and incompetent this team is. I know it's five games, but how long do you stick with something that is clearly not working this is a. I, by the way, by the way, I I would anticipate this is going to be the most mocked NFL game perhaps of oh, all time. I mean, far. it must be brutal out there. Period. But think about this. Let's look at this string of Broncos games from the inept decisions in Seattle, correct? And uh, what what they were doing. I mean, every single week. I mean, I guess you got off the hook by beating San Francisco, right? But every single week there are some serious issues. The fact that you had to hire Jerry Rosberg, period, what does that say? Yep. But I got to put this on Russell Wilson. I really yep. do. At the end of the day, the goal is to win the freaking game. You just cannot do what he did throwing that interception in the end zone. You just can't do it. No doubt. And if we're being fair, guys, what would be we be saying right now if that exact same game was played and Drew Locke was wearing number three for the Broncos? Oh, we'd be running him out of town. Exactly. Would we, though? Or is that what you expect out of Drew Locke? And that's why this is so frustrating, because no, you expect no. greatness no, out on, of – Hold on, hold on. 
you don't expect that core of a decision. True. That core of a decision from any NFL quarterback. That guy would have to be so wide open to make that throw. And, and listen, if he is that wide open, make the throw, cinch the game, I'm fine with that. But it was just not the position to make a risky play because the end of the, the, the bottom line is to win the game. Yeah. Seriously, and that is what has got me the most upset and furious right here. And 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 yes, we would be mad at, at Drew Lock, Lock but, but we should be mad at Russell Wilson as well. Oh, we should Russell be furious. Wilson tonight on that play basically cost the Broncos the game. He did. No, no I, doubt. The two interceptions yeah. were both brutal. And then he mm-hmm. has a chance to redeem himself with the fourth down play. That's why you got him. He's clutch. And that's the play call. I mean, look how open KJ Hamler is on that play. It's like wow. he's wide wow. open. Oh my gosh. Wow. He's wide open. That's oh why my gosh. Helmet. Like, I, I, and look where he's looking. Wow. He's looking to the left. There's three defenders. Wow. I mean, we can we can blame Nathaniel Hackett. We can blame the the talent around Russell Wilson. That's an inexcusable miss with the game on the line. That's why you have it, that guy. That's why you pay someone $245 million is to make yep. plays in that moment. And he shriveled no different than Trevor Simeon, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, the whole lot of them. Guys, they've scored 75 points in five games. They're averaging 15 I'll, points I'll a game. You, that mistake, I, I hadn't even seen that. No. James, that's unbelievable. All right, uh-huh. Zach by two, real quick, tweeting. Yeah. 2017 was 18.1 points per game. 2018 was 20.6. 2019, 17.6. 2020, 22.2. And 2021 is 19.7. The Broncos so far, after five games, are 15 points per game. Uh, you know, that's absolutely awful. Um, the, the mistake that Russell Wilson made is 10,000 times worse than what Melvin Gordon did last week. Oh, I mean, yeah, by that, far. Melvin Gordon's mistake was bad. Okay. It was in the second quarter. I mean, you yeah. were clearly still in the game. This is worse because the game was over. Mm-hmm. The Colts were not going to score a touchdown, okay? They were not. Six, six points. Three points would have been, you know, well, it wasn't good enough. Three points wasn't. But six certainly would have been. Um, it's inexcusable. Russell Wilson cost. I, I really did not think I, Russell Wilson would personally cost the Broncos a game this year. I'm glad both of you have words because, to be honest, I'm pretty speechless, and that doesn't really work for this career. It is unbelievable that we are even talking about this. Here's uh, James, the thing. I'm, go ahead. Russell Wilson, Richard Sherman was in the building tonight, and Russell Wilson wanted to shut Richard Sherman up. And he put his own personal vendetta ahead of the team. Because if you're playing within the team and you're just playing to win the game, as Mac mentioned, you don't make either one of those mistakes. I, I mean, they're, they're inexcusable mistakes. And you, so if that's the case, you look at, well, what's the reason? Okay, he did get hit in the head. I think that's a viable thing to ask. He got cleared, so we got to assume he was fine. Viable thing to ask. But the only other explanation was – National TV, he's been hearing all the talk. He's trying to shut people up. Richard Sherman's in the building, the, the biggest critic of his, and he wanted his chance to, uh, to to shut up his former teammate. And, man, all it turned into in the postgame show on Amazon was Richard Sherman basically talking about how, hey, I know what it's like, Broncos defense, to try and carry that guy to victories. Wow. Okay. Well, he, he, gets, he gets to do it. Yeah, no, he does. Uh, James, I'm interested to hear – would you have gone for it, or would you have settled for the tie right there? I would have. Well, gosh, and it, I mean, if it's anything other than fourth and one, you kick it. I, I'm not gonna. You guys, I'm not, this isn't even a. This isn't a question. They couldn't I, do anything in the red zone at all. Yeah, the entire no, I, game. I think I'm with you, Rachel. You got to look at the way the game has gone, and and the way the season's gone, and you're so bad in the red zone. But once the Broncos call the timeout to get down to one. You had to you had to go for it. If it's two thirty eight to play with two timeouts, kick the field goal. It's twelve twelve. You can stop them and get the ball back with all kinds of time left. Once you took a timeout, there was only one. Now it's tie or win. If my options are tie and win, I'm going for the win. I don't want the tie. But you could still win at twelve twelve with two thirty eight to go and two timeouts. But of course, Nathaniel Hackett 
despite the fact that the Colts called a timeout first, still had to call a timeout. I mean, this guy is yeah, guys, guys, guys guys James, right. You 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 kick the field goal, you extend the game. Correct. And then you don't, don't you got two timeouts. You you can get the ball back. And the concept is always to extend unless you're absolutely positively desperate. But then you're in the gun. So it's like you you only need right. one yard for a first down. You don't the, even have to get a touchdown. Uh, so why are so, you in the gun and you put the ball back six yards further? If you go under center, you fake it to Melvin Gordon, you roll Russell Wilson to the right, run pass option. Right. If it doesn't work out, you're saying, hey, you know what? Okay, at least you had two what chances to the best player. But instead, right. he just drops back and he, he just was tunnel vision on Cortland Sutton, not looking anywhere else. Oh, my God. I, honestly, guys, and I know after losses, everybody's very hyperbolic. And I've been, but I've been watching this team for 40 years. I watched five Super Bowls that were blowouts, right? They lost by combined 206 to 58. This was as frustrating as it, and as embarrassing as any Broncos game I've seen. It was unbelievable. And so, I think that's the. Sorry, does, the Walt, does the Walton Penner group just accept this? Apparently, I mean, but it was that was well, a hold joke. Hold on, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. What specifically would you do? What can you do? I'm. Idro Evero would be my head coach a week from Monday night in, in L.A. against the Chargers. Wow. And you'd hire an offensive coordinator to call the plays and get rid of out as well. No, no. I'd let Russell Wilson call his plays. Just call your own plays. <laughs> Do what John Elway did in 1987 and call your own plays, Russ. This no, could but, he, but could he could, here, hey, hey, hey. here's what you could do. Here's what you could do. You could move Evero in as head coach. You could. You could blow out uh, Hackett and Outen, which would cost you a pretty penny. But you could. But, hire, but you they could have hire, money. You could hire some sort of offensive coordinator up in the booth to call the plays. I don't know. That could practically be anybody. Maybe it's uh, Clint Kubiak. Yeah, if Clint Kubiak's offense. Or how about this? Better than this. How about this? How about hiring Gary Kubiak? Whatever. Fine. I, Fine. I mean, at this point. What about Harry, hiring Gary Kubiak right now to be the coach? All they right. Could, they could hire the late Buddy Hackett to coach the team, and it'd be better than this. We can talk about this all we want, but how likely is it that the Walton Penner Group is going to say, this is absolutely unacceptable, and we are making a change, James? Zero chance. Zero chance. And listen, everybody's going to think I'm nuts, and ev but everybody said I was nuts when they needed to get rid of Vic after the first season. Like, it ain't going to change, right? Go back and look at Nathaniel Hackett's track record in Jacksonville, in Buffalo, at Syracuse. He looked really great in Green Bay when Matt LaFleur was calling the plays and Aaron Rodgers was running the plays. Yeah. Awesome. Great. And then, oh, well, he's the son of a dad. Yeah, a guy who went 32 and 38 as a head coach. What a what a lineage. I mean, it's they should make a change. They really should, but they won't after five games. But they should. This is not working. Nathaniel Hackett's in over his head. This is an absolute unmitigated disaster. Tonight was inexcusable. I, I, any other team in the league beats the Colts tonight at home on their on their field. Uh, that was totally inexcusable. D Max putting it on Russ. Who are you putting on, James? Okay, just to be different, I'll put it on Hackett. Especially since I'm saying he's got to go. I just don't think. Yeah. Clearly, Russell Wilson isn't comfortable. Clearly, but see, here's here's the problem. As as poorly as the game was coached, and I'm not disagreeing with you. At the end of the day, you should have won the game. But your your quarterback made some made an insanely stupid decision. Okay? But run the ball. So, run the ball. Um, I only, actually think I'm. Go ahead and finish. Go ahead, no, go ahead, I was go gonna ahead. say I actually think I agree with James that this is on Hackett. You should never have given it to Russ. He hasn't been able to do anything with it. And you should have – I'm going to stick to it. You should have gone for the tie. You should not have tried to win it knowing that your offense hasn't been able to do anything. TJ Ward said, can't put the blame all on Russ. It's a lot going on behind the scenes, and it's not Whoa. working. Wow. Yeah, it's not That's, working. That's for sure. Well, but TJ Ward's uh, insinuating there's – this discontent behind the scenes as well which we've already seen from players and i actually wonder i was going to ask both of you is this officially going to be the breaking point for this team we've seen players get on twitter we've seen them chirp on twitter 
is this officially the moment that it's going to just be doomsday for the Broncos because they've lost it. Russell Wilson is sitting at his locker with Nathaniel Hackett having an extended talk while Melvin Gordon sits next to them and listens. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I saw, I saw that a few weeks ago, by the way. When we finished up what we do here, I, I went into the locker room. Nobody's there. And it's like Russell Wilson sitting at his locker talking to Nathaniel Hackett. That's – what are you doing? Can't they like, go do that in Russell Wilson's office back at the – Facilities. That's right. Go to Russell Wilson's office. Yeah. There you go, Rachel. Very good. And, and that's that's just not right. That's just not right. That's just not the way it's supposed to be at all. If you want to have a conversation like that, you have it like in an office somewhere. You don't sit there in front of the media and have some sort of lengthy dressing down of the head coach. That That is the coach going to him, not the other way around. Nathaniel that's Hackett ridiculous. has lost, has lost right. his team. I yeah. can't imagine what Twitter is going to be like tonight. This was the thread that you pulled on the sweater, and then yeah. you just you keep pulling, and you're like, oh, my gosh, the thing just fell apart. It's K.J. Hamler throwing his helmet. It's things going on on the sideline. Like, it unraveled. James, I'm going to – I'm going to let you know on this, too. Um, while we were waiting to come out, we're no longer allowed on the field at the two-minute warning. While we were waiting to come out, Bradley Chubb was yelling at a Colts player that was getting pulled back. Like, this team has lost it. By the way, I'll tell you something else. There's two ways to go off the field, through the tunnel where we're yes. standing, and then through a tunnel at the 50-yard line yep. where you don't have to go through the media. The vast majority of players love going through the main tunnel yep. because you win the game, you're in front of the media, you're high five and you're happy, and there's just a bigger crowd in that tunnel than through the 50-yard line. I would say three quarters of the team went through the 50 yard line. Yeah. I mean, they didn't even come through the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, Russell Wilson certainly didn't come through the tunnel. I don't know if he did a jersey exchange with Matt Ryan. Here's the thing Pat Sertan, I'm not sure who he did it with, but he did walk in with a Colts player's jersey. And I'm sorry, I don't like that. I don't, well, I don't, I know it's bigger than the game, but you just got smashed by one of the worst teams in the NFL and you're going to trade jerseys? I, I, I inherently do agree with you, Rachel. Yeah, I, the one guy I don't want to be critical of is Patrick Sertan. I mean, you know, of all – hey, here's who I'm not going to rip on. I won't really rip on him. I know what you're saying. I won't rip on Bradley Chubb either. We thought mm -hmm. he was going to have a huge game, and, and Bradley Chubb did have a huge game. A two and a half sacks, seven tackles, four solo, three quarterback hits, and a tackle for a loss. I mean, he almost single-handedly destroyed the Colts offense. Hey, here, here would be my, my – Final question on Nathaniel Hackett, though. What, <laughs> Back what, to Hackett. what makes you think it is going to be better in 11 days? Not you, like just in general, like other yeah, than just. Oh. No. By, by the way, we just got through the easiest stretch of the season for the Broncos. <laughs> Buckle Seriously. up, Broncos country. There's, there's no. We just lost on a short week at home. To the worst offense in the NFL. They are the 32nd ranked offense. And, and they, they proved it. didn't even have their starting running back. They did not have Jonathan no. Taylor. And they, were and they, last, also, they were dead last in scoring heading into the game. And they were under their average tonight. And they beat yeah. the Broncos. Philip Lindsay, 11 carries, 40 yards. Um, Jackson, I never even knew who he was on the team. Had uh, 13 carries for 62. There he is, hey, Philip Lindsay shaking good, hands with Cortland Sutton. Good for Phil, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been talking a lot about Disney movies. Gotta Jealous. feel pretty good to come in here. He's feeling good today. This is an offense that two weeks ago had more three and outs than they had with Kendall Hinton at quarterback. Like, what are we doing here? Like, oh. really? Like, okay, we can sit here and hope it's going to get better. But like the in five weeks, the body of evidence that is telling us this guy is not the right guy for the job. He's in over his head, and this is a disaster. Okay, if you want to burn the whole season, Walton Kenner Family Ownership Group, go for it. But you're two and three. You do have a future Hall of Fame quarterback. There have been glimpses. Your defense is really good. Do you fix it when you have a chance? Because you have 11 days. You have a chance. The next chance is going to be after you come back from London. You have a chance. Do you fix it, or do you keep going down the path that you know is going to turn out like Clark Griswold going over the jump down at the at the Grand Canyon? Keep doing it if you want to, but it ain't going to get any better. James and DMAC. Yes. This is the first time yes. 
since the Broncos had the Kendall Hinton game that they have not scored a touchdown. That's it's pathetic. It's it's I mean, and we're not. And Russell listen, Wilson is the quarterback yeah. of this team, gentlemen. Yeah, no, it's it's um it's sad. It's um disasters in the red zone twice, total disasters. It's not moving the ball. It's not having any flow. It's not being able to do anything. Um, the best play was when. Um, uh, Cortland Sutton ripped a ball away from his own player. They knocked a ref down <laughs> offensively. The the Broncos' best offensive player tonight was the back judge. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a great pick. Yeah. You I mean, know what though? You, I I think I'm actually giving it to Melvin Gordon, who is the best player on the offense tonight, which is surprising. He was, but he was good. He, he, I mean, he, he, he was, You know yep. what? Rachel, that's a good point. He's an easy scapegoat. Yep. That covers up the fact that there's all sorts of problems with this team. And it was much you know crazy for to just point the finger at Melvin Gordon. You know, it's crazy. We'll have to go back and really look at it. But uh, Cortland Sutton had five catches for 74 yards, 14.8, which is great. Cortland Sutton had um, 11 targets, but only five catches. Mm. So so what exactly happened on the six other targets to Cortland Sutton? Where where were those passes? Where Where was that going? And, of course, his average per catch is huge because he ripped the pass away from Montreal, Washington for a 51-yard gain. If not for that, of course, it looks different. But what what else happened there? Judy, ghost. Jerry Judy's a ghost. I don't know what to say. Eight targets, three catches. I mean, when he caught it, he did th- good things, I guess. Uh, he had a long of 37, but, I mean, three catches for 53 yards, that's it from Jerry Judy? You got to be better. Melvin Gore, actually, you know, look, look at Melvin Gordon actually had a decent game catching the ball, too. Three for 49, mm-hmm. and he had 54 yards, so he had over 100 total yards, and he did not let go of the ball. I mean, Melvin, Melvin Gordon. Gordon. Melvin Gordon wasn't the problem. He was the best player on the offense tonight, gentlemen, and that <laughs> for a right. game that everyone right. was waiting for Melvin Gordon to fail, he came out and he said, you know what, here I am. By the way, the, the I mean, bad news on bad news. Garrett Bowles, he'll be done for the year, correct? We think. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Garrett, good. We had, yeah, Josie Jewell, uh, Darby, Browning, and Bulls. Those are all the injuries yeah, that came out of night's game. So, so much for not playing in the preseason. Listen, Will can blame it on Thursday night football. Are you telling me Garrett Bulls doesn't get rolled up from behind if they play on mm-hmm. Sunday? I mean, come no. on. I mean, give me a break. You, you're telling me that Baron Browning makes a tackle, rolls down, and falls on his wrist? That oh. doesn't happen on yeah. a Sunday? Of course. It's, that's got nothing to do with Thursday football. Thir, thir, I will say this about Thursday football. It's bad. I mean, it's just a bad quality of football, period. And until the league goes to 18 games, two bye weeks, moves the Super Bowl back to President's Day, you're going to keep seeing Thursday night disasters that they're paying billions and billions of dollars for. So You can't blame Thursday night, though, at all, because they, how long have they been playing Thursday night football? It's, it's Well, uh, a long time, but Thursday night football has been bad for a long time. I mean, it's just bad, bad football because it's just not the requisite time that you need. It's not. Mm. It's just bad, okay? It's you got to overcome it, but but in a bigger uh, thing, it's bad. By the way, by the way, we don't really have a right tackle. Now we don't really have a left tackle. I mean, you got some They don't have a team. Issues. They don't have a team. For uh, what was supposed brutal. to be a Broncos elite defense, they sure didn't look elite tonight by any means. You know, it's – Listen, I'm just being, being honest. Well, there, like, there was nothing good that came out of tonight's game. They also have unbelievably bad luck. They can't recover a fumble. I mean, I know. Yeah. they knock the ball out over and over and over again. They can't get one. The defense did give up the drive to tie it at 9-9. They gave up the drive in overtime. But, guys, mm-hmm. they were on the field the entire game. Like, at some point, yeah. you know, it is Matt Ryan. It is – there are other guys over there that – Michael Pittman's a really good player. Like, they're going to do something at some point, especially mm-hmm. when you're, you know – losing guys left and right so uh, it's just it's a weird game because you guys were sitting there watching it was yeah. there ever a moment until that last pass fell to the ground that you thought they were going to lose the game i didn't no 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 I, i'm stunned i am i am i am stunned i i didn't think they were going to lose the game no no even on the fourth and one i figured you get a yeah. first down you'd run the ball you, you'd do something no i am absolutely stunned they lost the game stunned yeah you know when they the defense got the interception and you were like all right they're on what the 35 yard line and they go three and out I said there's no hope for this offense there's just none so I guess I thought it was a coin flip 
I didn't believe in the Broncos offense to be able to finish the game, but I was hopeful because we're all waiting for Russ to cook. We're all, I think Broncos country is hopeful. We're all waiting for that time. And I don't know if that time is coming with Nathaniel Hackett as the head coach. I, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know either. It's, 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 it's impossible to, to guess when this is going to happen. Boy, I can give you one weird light of sunshine. Would you like one bizarre light Absolutely, of we need it. Okay. In 2012, the Broncos started off two and three with Peyton Manning. And trust me, there was a lot of like, I think this is a mistake. This is a disaster. They played a Monday night game against the Chargers, losing 24 in nothing in the third quarter. They rallied and won the game in one of the more historic Bronco wins of all time. They went on to win. Uh, 10 more games, and they finished the season 13-3, and three, and unfortunately they lost on a very cold day to, to the Ravens and, you know, kind of a historic game too. But there was a trigger moment after five games with Peyton Manning where it all did click in, and unbelievably it happened against the Chargers. That is the ex- on a Monday night, which is the exact situation they're going to find themselves in 10 days from now. Here's the thing, and this is a tease. Check us out on Coffee Break 1030 every single weekday morning. What did no Sean Marino say about this exact conversation earlier this morning? Manning was still doing well. And who did you compare Russell Wilson to, DMAC? Well, Tim Tebow, but we don't need to focus on that right now. Tim so, Tebow. But 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 let's focus. Ra- Rachel, Rachel, I'm I'm trying to I'm bring, just saying. I'm trying to bring sunshine into I, this. I I see it hey. and Tim oh. Tim Tebow gets that fourth and one. Oh, no Down. doubt about it. Well, I mean, he he did on a famous play with the Jets years and years ago on an end around. Oh. Yeah, he, ran in for he, he finishes the that drive, they win the game. But, yeah, yeah. D-Mac, I, I hear what you're saying. There is some historical, like, weird coincidence to it that, all right, you know, I kind of believe in the way things line up. So I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that a bit. But the Broncos have lost to the Seahawks, probably going to have a top 10 pick, right? The Raiders, they were 0-3 at the time. And the Colts, the lowest scoring team in football. When the Broncos started two and three in 2012, they lost at New England. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, pretty good team. They lost at Atlanta, a team that started eight and zero was the last team to lose a game, and they lost to Houston, who went 12 and four. Totally different scenario. James, you're such a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, everybody! You can just take that soundbite right there. That's all it is. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> no, of course, that's very, very fair. I, I was oh. trying to ignore the level of competition the Broncos actually went two and three to there, but James is correct. Um, maybe on a deeper level, while you're correct, let's just hope perhaps something better can click at some point, Agreed. but it doesn't seem obvious. It no. does not seem obvious right now. And we'll see. Uh, stay tuned to DenverFan.com. We're keeping everybody updated as much as we possibly can. A great source. DMAC, James, as always. The Can Bron- I give you one one other quirky quinky ding before oh, we get out of here? Sure. Who was the coach quirky of that? Quirky quinky ding. Who was the coach of that 2012 Broncos team? John Fox. John Fox was back in the building yes, tonight, coaching for the Colts. Well, okay. So nobody cares, I guess. I guess you know. <laughs> I, think, I think it's yeah. just depressing more than anything. Um, all right, everyone. All right, anyways. that's gonna do it. Broncos country. The Broncos fall. 12 to 9 to the Indianapolis Colts on Thursday night football. A tough one again. Stay tuned, DeverFan.com. Myself, James, and Cecil will be on coffee break tomorrow morning, 10 30 a.m. You can come tell us your thoughts after a night's rest, and we'll see everybody in the morning. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us.